In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a trading bot using Python and Robinhood. So the way that we're going to do this is by interacting with the Robinhood API. So we're gonna use this tool called Robin Stocks. And basically what this will allow us to do is interact with the Robinhood API and run a bunch of different functions. You can log in, log out, get profile information, and even place orders to buy and sell stocks. So I'm here inside of Visual Studio Code, and as you can see, I have a virtual env set up. I have a bot.py file, which will be our script for this project, and then a secrets.py file. And inside of the secrets.py file, I simply have variables for my username and password. So go ahead and add that to get to where I am. And the first thing that we need to do is actually install this package. So we can do that using pip copy this command here and simply open up a terminal make sure your virtual environment is activated and once you have that simply paste and run that command now I already have it so it will just update it if it needs to after we have that we want to import that so we'll say import that's called robin underscore stocks we're going to import that as R, and we also need to import our username and our password. Remember, that's from secrets.py. We can do that just like that. So the first thing that we need to do is log in. So we go back here. We can find all of the necessary functions that we would need on this docs page. So if we scroll down, we see Robinhood functions. If you go to logging in and logging out, it'll bring us to this. And essentially for anything you want to do, you're gonna to wanna to find it in the docs, find what method you need to invoke, and look at the parameters. So as you can see, we're gonna call simply login off of our Robin stocks, and here are the parameters that we need. So username, password, expires in, and then if you have two-factor authentication enabled, you're gonna to need to use this. So we'll take a look at how to do that. Let's declare a method, say def login. And all we're going to do when we call this login method is invoke the login method from our API. So we'll say r dot login. Remember this takes the username, the password, expires, in, we're going to set that equal to 86400 seconds. And then by SMS equals to true. And by adding this, if you have two factor authentication enabled via SMS text message, this line here will send that code to your phone when you run this script, and then you're going to have to manually enter in that code. And before we call this, let's add a logout method. Do the same thing, def logout. And this is very simple, it's just r.logout. Now let's invoke both of those methods. We'll call login, and we'll call logout. Let's go ahead and run this and make sure everything is working as expected. So as you can see, we're getting an error saying that the authentication is expired. So on your phone, you're gonna to wanna to go to messages and you should see the code appear there. Simply go ahead and type that in, hit enter, and there we go. So it worked. All right, and so from here, next steps are really up to you, depending on what you want to do with this script. So for this video, I'm going to basically make a Bitcoin trading bot. So essentially, we're going to invoke the buy crypto method, buy some Bitcoin, and then we're going to set a limit sell order dynamically, about $10 or $15 higher than the price that we bought it at. And then we're going to wrap that inside a loop, so it'll just continuously run that. So it'll buy and sell until we stop the script. So let's go ahead and find that method. So we have a couple of different options for buying this. We have order by crypto by price. So this will place a market order with whatever price you want to buy it at. So that's the one we're gonna use. 
First thing that we're going to do, though, is create a method for this. So we're just going to call this buy BTC, buying Bitcoin, and set limit sell. So like I said, we're going to buy it and then immediately set a limit sell order. Let's declare a variable symbol. This is just Bitcoin, so the tagger for that is BTC. Amount in dollars, so how much we want to buy. This is up to you. I'm just going to say $10. That's fine. Now we need to invoke this method. So we'll say r.orders dot order by crypto by price copy that paste it in here and then that takes in symbol amount in dollars and time in force so let me copy this time in force we'll pass in the symbol amount in dollars and the time in force we'll say good till cancel so if we ran this method it would simply buy ten dollars worth of Bitcoin and that's all. So the next thing that we want to do is when this order executes we want to find out what we actually bought it for because remember this is a market order so we don't know the exact price. So we want to find out how much that Bitcoin was bought for and set a market price for ten dollars more. So for example if we bought Bitcoin at 50k, we want to set a limit sell for $50,010. So let's get a variable. We'll call this bought price. And we can use another method here r.orders.get all crypto orders info equals none. So this will get all of the crypto orders. We want to grab the first order, or I should say the last order, because this will return a list. We want the last one that was added to the list, and then we want to grab the price off of that. And you might be wondering how I know that we are, need this variable price, and that's because I've run this before and I simply printed everything to my console so I know what this is returning. And let's go ahead and look at the cell. So we're going to use order cell crypto limit right here. And we need to convert this bot price to a decimal. So go ahead and highlight all of this, copy it, We'll say decimal, paste that in there, and we need to import that. So we'll say from decimal, import decimal, there we go. And then we also want to round this to have zero decimal places. So copy this again, round, paste it in, comma zero. So just to recap, we order the Bitcoin and then we need to figure out the bought price. So we invoke this method to grab all of our crypto orders, grab the last one we did, grab the price, convert that to a decimal, and then around that so that it has no decimal places. Next we need the limit price. So how much do we want to sell this for? For that, we simply want to sell it, and this is up to you, but for me, I'm going to sell it $10 more than I bought it. So we'll do bought price plus 10. Next, we need the quantity. And for this, we want to sell everything. So we're going to need to do this again, but instead of grabbing the price, we want to grab the quantity and that will just return the amount of Bitcoin that we have putting it in this variable quantity and then finally we need to place the order R 
dot order cell crypto limit price. And that is right here. Order cell crypto limit. Oh, sorry, there's no price. And then that takes in everything we just declared, symbol, quantity, limit price, and time and force. So let me copy all that, paste this in, make sure symbol matches up with that, quantity matches up with this, and limit price matches up with this. And the limit price needs to be a float. So let's go ahead and cast that. Perfect. And then the last thing that we need to do is when we buy it and sell it, this is gonna happen very quick. So we need to add some sleep before we set our limit order of five seconds. And this is just to make sure that we actually bought the Bitcoin. Because if we try to sell before we actually have it, we'll get an error. So just a quick and easy solution is just add some sleep. And then we need to actually import that. So that's from time. All right, there we go. Last thing we could do is throw in some print statements so we can log to the console what's happening. So I just simply chose to print out two simple strings, bought and set limit order, but you can also throw in the bought price and the quantity and print that out too. So you know exactly how much you have and how much you bought it for. And then same thing here for the limit order, you could choose to print out what you're selling it for, but I'm just gonna keep it simple. And that's really it. And I'm just realizing this should be and. Buy BTC and set limit sell. Perfect. So we can go ahead and invoke this. We'll do that right here. And if we run this, we'll log in, buy 10 bucks worth of Bitcoin, set a limit sell for $10 higher. And remember that $10 higher is the price of Bitcoin. And then we're logging out. So let's run that and see what we get. So we bought it, waiting five seconds. We set limit order and it logged out. So perfect, looks like everything worked as expected. And if I go and open up Robinhood, there we go. So I bought the Bitcoin and it received my order to sell. So that's it right there. That is a very, very simple Bitcoin bot with Python. And if you want to run this repeatedly, what you could do is you could wrap this here in a loop and execute it every minute, five minutes or whatever. Uh, the problem that you might run into is if you don't sell within those five minutes, you'll just buy 10 more dollars worth. Uh, and that could add up if you're not selling. So you can always use this method here, orders, Dot get all crypto orders and you can check if you sold by accessing the side key on that. I'll throw a screenshot up on the screen so you can see what I mean by that. Um, that's really it. Like I said, there's a bunch of different things that you can do with this API. So feel free to check out this link in the description and see what else you can build. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.